So President Trump is running, and polls show he dominates the GOP, including over people like Republican Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. In his new book, The Return, Trump's Big 2024 Comeback, Dick Morris reveals while Governor DeSantis will not run. Dick Morris does say Trump faces three big threats running in 2024. Here he is. Now back to Dick Morris. All right, so uh, some Republicans are getting restless after six years of, of Donald Trump leading the party. The media uh, going to extravagant coverage uh, to potential rivals like Ron DeSantis. They really do like Ron DeSantis, probably just because he's not Donald Trump. How do you think this is going to play out? I don't think DeSantis is going to run. I don't think anybody is going to run. You might have Liz Cheney or Mitt Romney or somebody coming in uh, just to see what they can do. But uh, I don't think any real candidate's going to run. Uh, Donald Trump is head of Ron DeSantis in John McLaughlin's latest poll among Republican voters by 59 to 15. So you have to be a certified idiot to run in those, uh, against those odds. And I don't think anybody will. I think the important point is that Republicans, the polling is showing, a lot of them used to say, I like Donald Trump's policies, I like his accomplishments, but I don't like his personality or his temperament, and I can't vote for him because of that. Now they're saying the exact same thing, and they're saying, but after I see what happened once he's gone, I am going to vote for him because we need him back. And the, the malfunction, dysfunction, of the Biden presidency is the best argument Trump can have for why he's needed back. And that need overcomes their concern about his, uh, his antics, as it were. You know, in the campaign, I had something that I talk about in the book called the Frank Perdue theory. Do you remember Frank Perdue, John? Mm -hmm. The chicken farmer, right? Yeah, he, he was the chicken guy, and he came on and he said, it t apparently he was an SOB, and it says, it takes a tough man to make a tender chicken. Yes. <laughs> And I said, let's use that as our line in the campaign. So we had ads that say, nice guys don't cut it in Washington. It takes a Donald Trump to get this stuff done. So the people would understand that his personality was of a fabric with his achievements. And you can't have one without the other. Right. The other way I've had of saying it is, do you want General Patton to have been kinder and nicer as he was pushing across France and Germany in World War II? Right. Uh, the fact that Donald Trump is Donald Trump is why we don't have uh, the tax levels we've had, is why we were able to close the border, is why we kept Russia and China in line. Right. Uh, because he's Donald Trump and he acts like it. Uh, and you don't think Mike Pence is going to run? You talked to, you know, ser no serious person would run either. You don't think he's a serious contender or you don't think he's going to run? Which is it? I think he's not going to run. Uh, none of them are going to run. I mean, who runs in the face, face of five to one polls against them? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know, Dick, but it certainly is. And maybe this is part of the media, media narrative because it, they're always trying to find yeah. who could be running against Donald Trump. Uh, something else we got to talk there's about. There's a crucial difference. Go ahead. Go ahead. John, there's a crucial difference between an announcement statement and a suicide note. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good point, Dick Morris. Uh, let's talk about Joe Biden's age. He's going to be 81 if he does, in fact, run in 2024. And we are obviously we talk about this all the time. See the gaps, um, you know, the weird kind of uh, walking off the red carpet as when he was in the Middle East and that type of stuff. Now, if he doesn't run and there's more talk of this, who takes his place? Well, I spend a lot of time in the book outlining the book, The Return, outlining what that scenario might be. I think you have to layer it in terms of time. The, uh, the minute Trump, the minute Biden, I think the Democrats are going to come to Biden after 22 and saying, listen, you have to say you're not running again. We just got slaughtered in the congressional elections and we can't carry you at the head of the ticket. You don't have to resign. We won't force you out, but you got to say you're not a candidate. And then attention will shift to Kamala Harris, but then everybody will see her poll numbers are even worse than Biden's, and she's an even worse top of the ticket. And Kamala will have to follow with a statement of her own, saying that she's going to retire after the first term. That'll open the floodgates. And first, you'll have a rush of establishment candidates. Uh, Buttigieg, probably the most prominent among them, uh, maybe Newsom, the governor of California, maybe uh, the governor of Colorado, uh, Jared Polis. maybe a variety of, of Democrat. What? 
Jared Polis, the, the governor of Colorado. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. The governor of Colorado, Jared, a bunch of, of frontline Democrats. You'll also have the blacks coming up with their own candidate because Harris is out. And that'll probably, I think, be uh, be uh, the senator from New Jersey. Uh, uh, but if uh, but if at the election in, in Georgia elects the the new black leadership, uh, I think that may provide uh, an alternative candidate. Mm. But I think that ultimately the the left, the black candidates and the whites, will ultimately face a challenge from the left. Of the Democratic Party, Stacey Abrams, whose name I was looking for, the left will ultimately challenge that consensus and say, "We want a young, aggressive, progressive candidate running for president, and we want it to be either we want it to be AOC, because huh. we think Bernie Sanders is over the hill. We don't think he's able to do it, and we think we should go to the person who is the inspiration of our movement." And when that happens, I think the center is going to collapse. Because the left will get out so many votes that they'll be able to win these primaries, that will trigger Hillary Clinton coming in, because she'll come in and say, "I'm here to save the Democratic Party from AOC. I'm here to stop the leftward drift." She's already spoken about similar lines, and I think eventually the contest will boil down to AOC against Hillary Clinton wow. for the soul of the Democratic Party. 2024 may be the biggest election in history, and Dick Morris's new controversial book says Donald Trump is not only running, but he has a game plan to create a new majority. Dick Morris claims that big tech, big media, and the deep state want to stop Donald Trump at all costs, but that Trump will prevail nevertheless. The Return is already a number one Amazon bestseller, so make sure you get your copy at bookstores everywhere or check out the free offer. Go online right now, and thank you for joining us for this special edition of in depth. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. September is historically the worst performing month for the stock market, so you better be ready for it. The Fed continues to aggressively raise rates, and JP Morgan is forecasting another mega rate hike September the 21st. Is that why Jamie Dimon said an economic hurricane is coming our way? Well, gold and silver have remained remarkably stable despite the Fed aggressively raising rates today. The Patriot Gold Group has a special incentive for Newsmax viewers. Huge! Now, precious metals investors can enjoy the No Fee for Life Gold and Silver IRA on qualifying rollovers or enjoy free, discreet, insured shipping on all direct gold and silver purchases. Here's the number, 800-356-4470. Call 800-356-4470 today. 